Good night. Ain't you hard here. Borderlines use you. Borderlines untreated. People with the patterns of BPD, maybe not diagnosed, but obviously who are showing you all those patterns and interpersonal relationship and possibility and communication and possibility. And they, borderlines use people. And not the same way as narcissists. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter to you because it is so painful. And people, you know, in the idealization phase, it's an unconscious setup, right? And it really happens between borderlines and codependence because people with codependency have the, their own reasons not known to them, not understanding, maybe never having heard of BPD when you first get into these, the relationship. But the thing is, so these people... They show you that and they're just trying their best to actually seem interested in you. And, and, and you're almost like a quote new toy at that point. And, and because they're so childlike emotionally. So they're trying to do something adult and get in this relationship with you, but then they struggle more with all the trigger dysregulated emotions of their lack of emotional development. So they really aren't capable of healthy love consistently or congruently or age appropriately, and they don't really attach to you. People with BPD are using you. And, and why is that the case? And what am I talking about? Well, because many times it won't feel like that. And then there might be times when it really absolutely feels like that. But you don't maybe want to know that. You don't want to take that in. You may, a lot of people are still denying that, right? You're still looking for that person who you thought they were. You're still looking for those good times or intermittent good times, whether that was in the idealization phase before the first split of the evaluation or not. But, you know, signs that people with BPD are using you, they want what they want when they want it. And they have to have whatever it is they want from you when they want it. And it doesn't matter how much you give to the borderline. It's not going to satiate them. It might make something a bit better here and there, but like you're losing yourself in the process. So a lot of people have codependency and are with people with BPD and keep denying your own feelings, suppressing your own feelings, your own needs, your own wants. Maybe you don't think about it. Maybe you're in denial still, but like, you know, so many people in these relationships with people with BPD, largely when they're untreated, but they have to be really significantly treated. They, people are denying or just somehow losing yourself to the suppressing of your feelings and your needs, walking on those eggshells, always trying to give the borderline what they need or be their emotion regulation tool or validate them trying to walk on all those eggshells so they won't go off or give you the silent treatment so they won't have the borderline toddler tantrum which unfortunately people with bpd have a loss of self unstable identity and for some really no sense of identity and that all gets put onto you. So they're unconsciously seeking identity through you. They experience you as maybe good parent never had for a while or off and on when they're getting what they want, like young children. So therefore, you're there to meet all their needs to, quote, try to make them happy, unquote. They're not really ever happy. That doesn't really work. There's no mutuality in all of this. So how is it? that you can deny, and some people still are in denial, that they actually loved you and attached to you and, and, and it was so great and everything because essentially, without that mutuality reciprocity, where is the borderline when you need something? You give, you give, you give, you try to validate, you capitulate to their tantrums because you just want peace and for it to be okay again though it's never really okay because you're negating yourself so as a borderline is using you at infinitum in these relationships in all kinds of ways not necessarily consciously not the same way that people many narcissists use people but more and more i'm hearing from clients that you know people with bpd are rather transactional too i've heard from clients 
more recently, like the last three to five years even, that they have had, they've been with somebody with BPD that will actually describe, you know, when they're angry and they'll just say stuff. It's like, whether they're aware or not, they're kind of hitting the truth. Like, well, you know, you always want this or that or the other thing, and I don't know what to do or something like that. And they'll say like, you know, I just, you, you might confront them with something or try to present a conversation about something. And they'll just say, well, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, but I am who I am and they don't know who they are. And that's just the way that I roll. And um, yeah, I might do things. So if you, if you said to them, I feel like you're just transacting with me. I feel like you love me. Do you see me? Do you hear me? Do you care about me? They might say, oh, I know I kind of like relate in a transactional way, but it works for me. Or if, if you ask them something else, then if they acknowledge what you said versus just fighting you tooth and nail, then they'll say, and, and then getting into accusations and all kinds of stuff, they'll just say, well, yeah, I might be a little bit like that or uh, whatever, but they don't apologize. And if they, if they have any awareness to, to use the words that you've used or, or the major word in your sentence, they'll just try to justify it by saying, but that's just me. That's just normal. I've had so many clients over the years where, you know, they have a parent or a family member or a best friend or somebody, unfortunately, pass away or, you know, meet with a really horrible accident, kind of shocking things and etc. Losses, right? And other types of losses or stressors in their lives who are with somebody with BPD. Where's the borderline when that happens in your life? They're nowhere to be found because they don't know how to cope with their own emotions, with unhealed past, with the loss of self. They don't respect you. They really don't listen to you. They really don't hear you. Maybe the odd time. But see, borderlines now, too, are breadcrumbing in their own way. And borderlines give you, sometimes, you know, they might just be in a better emotional place, but they're, they're getting what they want. And then they'll breadcrumb you, too. And it's not the same as the way narcissists do. But people with BPD are now breadcrumbing, and they give the intermittent reinforcement, not maybe in the way that many people would describe narcissists calculatingly do this stuff. But again, it doesn't really matter. So they don't respect you. They really don't understand you because they're so busy trying to make sure that you understand them. And if you're not giving them what they want at any moment in time, then you don't love them. You don't understand them. You don't care about them. And why can they go from one minute seemingly like everything's so okay and it's it's about love and the relationship and the next minute it's like, well, you just said this, you just did that, all those red herrings, right? And that means you don't love me and you don't care about me. Borderlines use people and I don't know that that is always, I think for many people with BPD, it's not conscious. It's coming out of their arrested emotional development whereby no matter how intelligent they are in the IQ, they are still like young children looking to a parent outside of the bedroom type thing, right? Uh, for everything else. Like, well, you know, if we're going to move in together, um, yeah, your house is this or that or the other. They'll put it down and everything. And they'll say, well, I think, like, we need a new house. So they'll expect, like, I've had clients that were, you know, this, they bought a new house to be with the borderline, everything, you know, they thought it was going to work out. But often when the borderline wants to move in in a hurry or get married real quick, they, they put up those red herring obstacles. Like, I want a new house, which might be an obstacle for some people. Maybe some people can afford to go do that. But it's always do for them, do for them, do for them. As if you're like trying to prove yourself to them, but you can't. So people in treated with BPD are not mutual, not reciprocal. They don't care. They don't have space and time with all their, it's, 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 I'm not making an excuse for this. They're so busy inside of their own self-absorption and selfish ways, not always intentionally or purposefully, of trying to deal with all their own emotions and all that they don't know about themselves and the fact that they don't know themselves uh, so like, what do you mean that you said whatever, cause 
If it, if it isn't what they want to hear, if it isn't what they want right then, they're just going to red herring, ad hominem, attack, accuse you, call you names, because they're just trying, they need control. They need to externalize control, and they're externalizing control in a entitled, um, entitled and sometimes exploitive way of just gimme, 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 consciously or unconsciously. And the codependent is externalizing out the need to give, to win approval, that kind of thing. So it's like you give, you give, you give, you give. They take, they take, they take, they take. But they don't respect you. And if you go to them with your needs or you try to have these conversations about, well, this, that, the other thing, and I don't feel heard or seen, or, you, you know, you want to buy, a, or, oh, you want to buy a new house, we'll move in together, and you want to go on a trip, but we're having trouble relating to each other. So you might try to say, well, I'm finding it difficult to kind of, talk to you you know or i'm not feeling hurt by you and they'll just like be like what's your problem and you're like wait a minute maybe we need to work on how we're communicating before we buy a house or go on that trip you want to go on or whatever it is and then when you say that they're like well you're just because they're not getting what they want so like a toddler really they're feeling inside but they will say something like well you're just sabotaging this relationship you don't love me you don't care about me meanwhile even that statement, you don't care about me, is projection because they really don't care about you. They care about your validation. They care about what you can do for them. They care about not being alone. They care about not having to be alone with the abyss of the feelings inside that they have anyways when triggered to dysregulated emotion, even in a relationship with you. And then as most people know, you know, if you try to talk about how you feel or what you need, it ends up in a jade quote conversation, which is justify, argue, defend, and explain. And you're the one that does all the justifying, the arguing, the defending, and the explaining. Well, the person with BPD just keeps saying, I don't want you talking about you out of your mind. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Why do you think people with BPD can ghost and discard so easily, whether they come back or not, over and over? How can they monkey branch, and they don't all do this, but many, how do they do it so easily and so often with seemingly no remorse and no apologies, right? Because they're not really attached. They don't really know what love is, and they're using you. And this is a real base. I'm not saying they're doing it like narcissists. I'm not saying it's calculated, but some of them will become aware of this at a certain point in time. Like I had a client that told me a while ago that, yeah, their person with BPD said, well, yeah, I know I kind of transact in relating, but, you know, that's just the way I am. It's always like, take it or leave it. But, oh, don't abandon them, right? It's it's always that I hate you, don't leave me. It's it's the closer, uh, closer apart thing. It's uh, getaway closer is what I was trying to say as well. And so, but... But the closeness, some of that might be physically intimately real. But even then, sometimes they get triggered to emotional dysregulation and they can age regress to a young child in the middle of. And so what do you think about if you were used by somebody with BPD? Whether you're still in that relationship, whether you still want them back, you know, try to suspend the good half of the cognitive dissonance and look at the negativity and how it's impacted you and hurt you, the negative aspect of things, the quote, bad half of the ledger. And do you think that you've been used? Or do you think it's like all just some kind of accident? And Because you know how often people with BPD will say, well, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. You just said, oh, how dare you say that? Because you don't care about me and you don't understand me. Oh, the borderline narrative of you, you all just don't understand us. You're all wrong because we don't do this, that, and the other thing. Well, they're always seeking your understanding, apparently, and everything they can get from you. But when you ask for 10 seconds worth of understanding, they're like, what? Like, I always understand. What do you mean? You never understand me, which is obviously a projection. But they do this often, inserting the red herrings. If you haven't seen it, check out my video, the red herring fallacy. Maybe I'll try to put it under this video. Also, the communication deficits and impairments that are really part a borderline personality disorder because these people are not emotionally mature until unless they get so far down the road in treatment as to almost be in a recovery 
or beyond what would just be called a uh, remission place. So I don't know what that means anyways. It's a medical term. So do you feel like you were used by somebody with BPD? Can you see that now? Are you still denying that? Do you realize that they really don't know how to love and they really can't attach to you if they haven't had significant treatment? Even when they will say the opposite and they will say they do love you and they will believe they love you and they will believe they're attached to you, but they're really still using you as that parent figure unconsciously that they need, 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 need from. So people with BPD often, you know, even when you might see something tender or you think it's positive or something good from them, they're in a dependent, needy kind of emotional place. And it's still more about them than it is about you. So there's no mutuality. There's no reciprocity from people with BPD. There's no really uh, achieved emotional intimacy that lasts. That's usually a big push-pull situation. And people with BPD untreated or not well treated at the core, they have the approach avoidance conflict and that takes a long time to work through in therapy and, and they can only work through that in therapy. So although people with BPD out there will still continue and they're not all the same, but many people out there with BPD who might well fit what I'm describing here, they're using people and not always consciously. There's more things being reported to me by clients than ever before about People with BPD breadcrumbing, what is essentially breadcrumbing. People with BPD, their intermittent reinforcement, how that happens. It's not really as calculated, but what does that look like? What is that doing to you? How does that, how does borderline intermittent reinforcement hit your codependent want and, and need for everything to be okay? So hit your denial about all that's not really okay. Their communication deficits, they don't know who they are. They don't love, they don't attach, they're using you, they need you, and you can only please them or get anything not childlike tantrum-y sort of devaluing and ghosting and all this stuff from them if you're giving them even a modicum of what they want. But often, no matter how much you give them, it's not satiating their needs, their neediness, and it's not your fault. But they need more, they want more, they need more, they want more. They're trying to escape their own incredible dysregulated emotion that sometimes many with BPD show outright in, in very volatile ways. And the quiet borderlines don't. But what do you think about what I'm saying here? Because borderlines use people. And they're not giving back all that you're giving to them. They don't even really give back 10% of the 90%, let's say, that the average codependent tries to give to the person with BPD. And why is it you can never really make them happy? Maybe only for a few minutes or half a day, and then you're not really making them happy, but they're getting something that kind of soothes them, calms them, and works for them. But the second that they don't feel that anymore, because that will go away rather quickly, then all of a sudden they're angry with you again, or you get close and then they pick a fight to get away, or they give you the silent treatment. What in any and all of that and more says that they love you, that they're attached to you, that they care about you, that they see you, that they respect you. They don't. They're using you.